In this video we're going to have a look at logic gates and logic circuits. A logic circuit is a circuit which is made up of lots of logic gates um, which control the flow of electricity and information through a system. Okay, So make up the zeros and ones that control what the computer does. Okay, They can either be theoretical idealized or they can be actual physical building blocks of an, of an electronic system. What I mean is we can describe how lots of processes work by using um, logic circuits but that process might not actually contain any logic gates or we can actually use logic gates to build a system. Okay, The logic gates that we're going to have a look at are the AND gate which looks like this. Okay, we're going to start with the AND gate. How the AND gate works is it has two inputs. Okay, this is important because not all logic gates have two inputs. It has an output as well. Let's call the output X and we'll call the inputs A and B. To describe how a logic gate works, we can draw what's called a truth table. Okay, a truth table is just like this we put on top of it the inputs that we have and we also put next to that any outputs okay what we're going to do is we draw well we write all of the possible combinations of zeros and ones okay of ons or offs that we can put in to this logic gate and then we see what happens with x so we can put in two zeros so we can put nothing into the logic gate or we can put 0, 1, we can put 1, 0, and the final possible combination is 1, 1. We use these truth tables to say what will happen with x in these given situations. Okay, so if in an AND gate we have 0 and 0, we get a 0. If in an AND gate our A is 0 and our B is 1, our x becomes a 0. The only combination which gives a 1 in an AND gate is 1 and 1. Hence the name AND gate. It's pretty easy to remember if you remember that it's called an AND gate because it requires A and B to be 1 for X to be 1. Okay? So, if we were describing this in a, a situation, okay, then we could say that and logic is used for example when we start our car for our car to work for X which is our car to work to be on both our ignition has to be on we have to have turned the key okay and there has to be enough petrol in it that's what I mean by idealized our car doesn't actually contain a logic gate but we can describe what happens in our car using a logic circuit if we want. Okay, so the next one, this is the AND gate. All right, <clears throat> the AND gate. The next one we're going to have a look at is an OR gate. Okay, so with the OR gate, how it works is, wait with me, let me just delete these to save doing it all again. So with an OR gate, it looks like this. It's kind of like the AND gate, apart from it has a rounded back here. Okay, once again, it's got two inputs and an output. The output, X again, and A and B. These are just arbitrary labelings. You can label them whatever you want. So, back to our truth table. With an OR gate, as you might have guessed, it needs one input. It needs either A or B. Okay? So, this here is a 0, because it needs either A or B. This one's got B, so it's a 1. This one's got A, so it's a 1. This one has got two ones, so that's a 1. So that's an OR gate. Alright. Next up, we have the NOT gate. This is the next basic gate, is the NOT gate. Okay. The NOT gate is slightly different to those two because it only has one input. So this one is the NOT gate. So we can get rid of B for the purposes of this and we can just scribble that out. Because as you can see over here, 
the NOT gate only has a single input. How the NOT gate works is it just switches over whatever goes into it. So there are only two possible combinations of input because we've only got one input of 0 and 1. If you put a 0 in, a 1 comes out. If you put a 1 in, a 0 comes out. Okay, so it's a NOT gate. It takes whatever goes into it, it switches it around, and that's the output. Right, they're the basic logic gates, okay? There are a couple more that are slightly more difficult to remember sometimes, um, and you won't always see them if you're doing, for example, an exam question, but you might do, obviously depending on the level of the exam. If you're doing a GCSE exam paper, um, then you might not see these, However, there's a possibility you could, so we'll go through them. The next one is called an X or gate. Okay. This one looks exactly the same as the OR gate, apart from it has another further line there. So, A and B, we've gone back here. We're now back onto a two input gate. A and B all the possible combinations again, oops, that's a zero, uh, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. It doesn't matter which order we write these in as long as we're showing all of the possible combinations. So, with an XOR gate, you might have noticed that it looks like an OR gate and also it has this part here which is also OR, the only difference is it's got this X. What this X means is exclusive. What that means is, whereas an OR gate was like this, Okay, that was an OR gate. An exclusive OR gate has a zero here instead of a one because it exclusively takes one or the other, but it doesn't take both of them. What I mean by doesn't take is it doesn't produce a one if both of them, both of the inputs are ones. So if you put both ones into an, or, uh, an X OR gate, it comes out as a zero because it's exclusive. Therefore, it only takes one of them. Okay. The next versions are, again, variations of what we've already looked at. So the next one we're going to have a look at is the NAND gate. So NAND. Once again, you might have noticed that it sounds a bit like AND, and it also looks a bit like AND. It looks a lot like AND, apart from it has this tiny little circle on the right-hand side. Okay. You might also have noticed that, that little circle we also saw in the NOT gate. And that's because how the NAND gate works is it is the NOT version of the AND gate. That might sound a little bit complicated, but all it means is it's the opposite of the AND gate. So if you can remember what the AND gate did, then you can definitely work out what the NAND gate does. So if the AND gate works like this. We had a 0 there, a 0 there, a 0 there, and a 1 there, because we needed 1 and 1 to be 1. The NAND gate, therefore, is the exact opposite of this. The NAND gate works like this. We have a 0 there, a 1 there, a 1 there, and a 1 there. Okay? Because it's the exact opposite. Finally, the last one we're going to have a look at. Oops, I shouldn't have deleted that. I'll start again. The last one we're going to have a look at is the NOR gate. Okay, and I probably don't even have to explain this because you'll see where we're going with this now, but NOR. Okay, how a NOR gate works, well, what a NOR gate looks like is exactly the same as the OR gate, not the XOR, the OR, with a circle on the front. And as you guessed, it's exactly the same as, well, it's not exactly the same, it's the exact opposite of the OR gate. So we've got 0, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. <clears throat> the OR gate before did this. We had a 0 here. We had a 1 there, a 1 there, and a 1 there. So therefore, we're just going to swap all of these around for the NOR gate. There we go. Okay? So, they're the gates. One more thing that we're going to go through before we go through the... Um, how we represent these in 
logic circuits is we're going to have a look at that's much easier we're going to have a look <coughs> at a couple of symbols okay you can when you see a logic statement okay what it means is a sentence which explains what a logic gate is okay so we could describe an AND gate by saying A and B okay that's a logic statement this describes the AND gate so the AND gate is A and B okay however we can also use a different notation where we can change these words into symbols okay so this boolean notation we're gonna have a look at it has a dot as the and okay so sometimes you will see a logic statement written like this with an and gate and sometimes you will see it written like this it's the same thing it's just a slightly different way of writing it so the dot is and with or that's a pretty bad O. With or, it sometimes looks like this. Okay? You might think that's a little bit confusing because surely you'd expect and to be this one because this is obviously the mathematical symbol for adding something. And if we say one and one, then it's two. Yeah? And therefore you'd expect to have this one. The reason we use this one for or is because when we come to adding together uh, binary numbers, um, we use or gates to create an addition okay we won't get into that here so we got the and is sometimes a dot and the or is sometimes a plus the x or is an or with a circle around it okay finally we've got the not gate okay the not gate if we say not a then we put a line on top of the letter that means we use a not gate so this thing here would be drawn like that okay because we've put a into a not gate and therefore this is not a with nand and nor it's obviously just the same as this okay but we put a line over them to so if we were to do that, that would mean NAND, okay? Obviously, if we've got A or B, yeah, to make that into a NOR, then we're just going to put a line on top of it. Let's have a look at how these work. So, we're going to have a look at creating a logic circuit, all right? We're going to create a logic circuit from a statement. So we're going to have... Uh, a, let me just write this out first. Okay, right. There we've got a logic statement. This says A and B or C. The first thing to look at is the brackets. We can see from these brackets that these two are together. So therefore, we should join these two in their own gate. And then we should join that, the result of that one, with C. How we do this is B, C, and over here our output is going to be called X. Okay, we're going to do this by putting A and B. You can see that they go together in an AND gate. The reason I've joined those down there instead of going straight across, because if I went straight across, we'd have an absolutely huge AND gate, and it would just look a bit strange okay so now we've done this we can cross that out we've achieved that now we've got this thing or C we join the result of that because now we're outside the brackets with C okay to do that we use an OR gate so I'm going to draw an OR gate I have not drawn an OR gate that's an AND gate okay and there we are. So that logic statement there looks like this logic circuit. 
Let's have a look now the other way around. Okay, sometimes you might be given a logic um, circuit and you might be asked to draw a statement from it. So uh, I'm not really going to think about it. I'm just going to write one out. I'm just going to draw one out and then we'll think about how we can answer it. So A, B, C. Right, you might have lots more. You could have D, E, F, of course. It just gets more, it doesn't really get more complicated. It just gets longer, the statement. So we're going to come and I'm going to join this one with this one with an and. I'm going to take the result of that. I'm going to join it with that. Okay, finally, um, just to make that a little bit more complicated, I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it through a not gate. I'm not, there's no reason for this. And I'm sure it can be simplified, but I'm just doing it to explain how we're going to draw the circuit. So now we've got an X there. Right, so now we've got A, B, C going into all these and they end up at X. So we need to draw a state, we need to write a statement from that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around individually write the statements using these gates okay so the first thing we've got is we've got a is joined with C and we've got this AND gate so I'm gonna put a and C then we've also got B joined to the result of that with C so these can go in brackets okay because they're on their own. The result of that is joined with B with an OR gate. So we're going to join the result of that with an OR gate with B. Okay, I'm going to put this in another set of brackets. Finally, we've got A is joined with the result of that with an AND gate. So AND A. The last thing to do is just to acknowledge the fact that this NOT gate exists okay so I'm gonna put a line on top of the A alright I apologize for how neat this is it's, it's pretty difficult to draw on this graphics tablet um, so there we go so you can see we've got B uh, sorry we've got A and C there or B there and NOT A there okay and that's pretty much it the last thing to remember is just that when we're talking about zeros and ones, so when we were talking about the ones and the zeros and the zeros and the ones, we can use this to refer to binary, okay, as we represent numbers in computers, or it can just mean on or off, okay. So sometimes you might hear that we're talking about uh, one in A and one in B, or you might talk about A being on, B being on, and C being off, for example. Okay, so it's just two ways of of describing this is by using the words on and off, or by using zero and one.